The next gate in our series to take a look at is the OR logical gate or logic gate. All right. Now, like with the AND gate, we talked about an algorithm defining the operation. Once again, a logic gate got a bunch of inputs coming in on the left hand side. They have different levels of logic one and logic zero, different values. Either they're a logic one or a logic zero. Go into this gate and then they output a single bit based on this algorithm. The algorithm for the OR gate is that the output is a logic one if any Remember, whenever we talked about the OR gate, excuse me, when we talked about the AND gate, we said that the output is a logic one if all inputs are a one. In this case, the output is a logic one if any input is a logic one. All right? All right? So, we did a truth table for the AND gate. Let's go ahead and do a truth table for the OR gate. And we're going to do a similar one. We're going to use three inputs, A, B, and C. And once again, mathematicians tend to represent these logic functions with two, two inputs with an operator. But in electronics, we'll find that we can actually represent multiple inputs into a single gate. So I've got three inputs here, which give me eight possible combinations of ones and zeros at the input, right? So here's my list. There's all eight of them, right? And what happens is, is if we look at this definition up here, it basically says that, you know, we're going to output a logic one in certain cases. Which cases are those? Well, the case that there's a one at any of the inputs. In fact, the only way we do have the kind of the corresponding, you know, and had we output a one only if all inputs are a one. It turns out there's another unique row in this situation, except what we're going to say is that we're going to output a zero only if all inputs are a zero, right? So there's my x equals a zero if all the inputs are a zero. If any of the inputs are a one, guess what? We're outputting a one. And so there's our truth table for a three input OR gate. Now I made the comment that it's, it's common to see a, a, an electrical circuit that would, to, would represent this. And, and let me show you what this is. Remember with the, the last one, I used kind of this idea of a push button, right? And so you have these two contacts that if I push the button, it's going to connect those two. Well, what I can do is I can have B and C, and I realize I got those kind of close together. We don't have a whole lot of board space here. But what I can do is I can say, okay, instead of putting A, B, and C all in parallel so that all three switches have to be pressed in order for a logic one signal to get from one end to the other, now what I'm saying is that if I have these switches in parallel, any one of those switches closes, any one of them, any one, in other words, any one of them is a logic one, then that logic one will have a path to make it to X. This is the OR circuit. Need more inputs? Just add more switches in parallel. Works just fine that way. All right. Now, let's talk about the logic circuit. The logic circuit itself, what the diagram we're going to put on a schematic, is slightly different than the AND gate. Remember, the AND gate was a shape just like a D. Not entirely sure how to describe this shape. It's instead of where the, the AND gate had a straight line where the inputs go in, the OR gate has a curved input. And then instead of having the rounded shape of the D as, as the point where the output comes from the AND gate, there's a pointed output for the OR. So this point right here, that's where the X is going to come out. And then the inputs are going to be labeled here 
on the input side, on the curve side. You know, you could kind of say that, you know, if you're a Star Trek fan, you could turn your head sideways and it looks a little bit like uh, those things that are on their shirts. Um, I'm not, I know nothing about Star Trek. I know that one of my students said, oh yeah, that's the communicator. I, I don't know, whatever it is, but it's the little emblem, right? Um, the deal is, is that there's a curved input where the AND gate has a straight input and there's a pointy output where the uh, AND gate is nice and curved and round. So there's your circuit right there. Now, we also talked about how important it is to be able to represent these things, these operations, as mathematical expressions. We'll call them Boolean expressions or Boolean algebra. And how are we going to represent these? If you remember from the AND, we used a dot or the product in order to represent the AND function. Whenever it comes to OR, well, it's a little different. It's in, in mathematics, Typically, a lot of mathematical uh, op functions use this little v, this little tiny v. And that little tiny v represents the maximum function. And the maximum function, well, it makes sense when it comes to the OR gate, doesn't it? If you look through every one of these rows, the maximum for the bottom seven rows, there's always at least one one in one of those rows. And the one, hence, is the maximum, and hence it goes to the output. The top row, however, the maximum value of that top row is zero. So we're going to have a zero as the output. So the maximum function really does make sense here. We're not going to use it. Because as I've told you before, later on, whenever we start doing design of Boolean expressions by taking a truth table and converting it to a Boolean expression, we're going to use something called a sum of products expression. We might occasionally even use a product of sums. That term sum, that refers to the OR. And so frequently you will see the plus sign used to represent the OR operation. So sometimes, and in the case of this class, what we're going to do is we're going to use that plus sign in order to represent the OR operation. All right? All right. Now, if any of you have had, and, and, and we've covered three functions right up to this point, right? We've covered the inverter, the NOT gate. We've covered the AND gate. We've covered the, the OR gate. There's a fourth gate, which really is not a true pure gate. We can't represent it with something simple like a homogeneous set of switches like this. Um, it's kind of a little bit more convoluted, a little bit more complicated than that. But the next lesson, we're going to be talking about something called the exclusive OR gate. Now, it too has a definition, an algorithm that we're going to use, which will allow us to use multiple, more than two inputs. But whenever it comes to the actual implementation of the circuit, a lot of the times it's just a two input operation.